Joining us now, senior fellow at the Eurasia Group Foundation, Mark Hanna. Good morning, Mark. Thanks for, for being here. Let's just get your, your start morning, with your Jonathan. take. Um, with your take from yesterday's meeting, what we know of it, uh, between Putin and Xi, and what do you think will be on the agenda these next two days? Yeah, President Xi didn't travel to Moscow to do anything other than to talk about his peace plan and how to end uh, the war. Secretary Blinken, we have to be careful when we, when we watch uh, both the news coming out of Moscow and America's response to that. The fog of diplomacy can sometimes be as blurry as the fog of war, and understanding what's real, uh, what people's motives are, uh, is important. So, you know, this dear friends rhetoric could be overblown. Uh, quickly after President Xi mentioned that, he said, we're strategic partners. It was dismissed, I think, by John Kirby as a marriage of convenience. It's true that China wants to back Russia in kind of bucking the Wests and re sort of revising the narrative of how this war began, but it also wants the war to end. And while it's true that Secretary, as Secretary Blinken said, a ceasefire would sort of freeze and sap Ukrainian momentum on the battlefield. There are also things in China's plan that Russia would not necessarily like, like the condemning of the killing of civilians, uh, the threat of nuclear use. So China's not necessarily in lockstep with Russia here, and there are ways in which the United States might actually support uh, the only country in the world that has economic leverage over Russia and a relationship with Russia to help bring uh, an end to this war sooner rather than later. It's getting bloodier. The trench warfare is is sort of as brutal as the, the sort of, you know, region of Bakhmut is, is sort of strategically insignificant. And it's unclear that the West can sustain its support for the war going into 2024 or whether Russia's political objectives are actually achievable in the near term. I sat down with General <laughs> Mark Milley and he pretty much said as much that, that as a military analysis, uh, a, a total defeat of Russia is not, uh, ex could, cannot be expected in the next year. Yeah, certainly U.S. officials have, have suggested that try, Ukraine's efforts to retake Crimea uh, likely would not be uh, successful. You mentioned John Kirby. He dismissed Russia as the, quote, junior partner uh, in that relationship with China. He also said, at least so far, no evidence that Beijing is going to send lethal uh, aid to Russia, but said Which, that that has not been ruled out. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, that's important. I mean, it is true that they're a junior partner. You know, China has uh, is sort of, Russia represents about 3% of Chinese trade whereas China represents about 30% of Russia's trade. So there is economic leverage here. And China, you know, the United States and Washington, we're going to hear a lot about sort of China giving diplomatic cover to Putin. But let's wonder, you know, we got to, again, with the fog of diplomacy, understand you know, what are the motives here? China has a sincere interest in wanting this war to end. It, it doesn't benefit from the nuclear use. It doesn't benefit from World War III. And it wants economic stability more than anything. So when you hear the quotes given by President Xi and President Putin, you can hear, for example, President Xi is kind of giving uh, Putin some some cover by saying, like, look, your people are going to continue to support you. That's what Putin needs more than anything, because morale at home, domestic support for Putin is waning as the war gets bloodier and as more Russians die. Uh, at the same time, Putin is giving President Xi cover because he's giving this kind of revisionist narrative about how the war started and about how the, the sort of Western-led international order uh, is impinging the sovereignty of countries like Russia and like China. In some ways, the best thing the United States can do is, is again, get China to, uh, you know, get China to, to cheer on a Chinese uh, effort to, to end the war. It's, again, unclear that uh, a, a sort of ceasefire is in Ukraine's interests right now. It's ultimately up to Ukraine. It's ultimately up to Russia to determine what those terms are that are going to lead to the negotiating table, but everybody should want this to end in diplomacy. The alternative is catastrophic. Yeah, officials, though, both in Washington and Kiev, suggest it's not yet time uh, for those that diplomacy, for those negotiations. A senior fellow at the Eurasia Group Foundation, Mark Hanna, we appreciate your perspective on this. We will talk to you again down the road. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, my dear friend. Take care.